Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you're doing really wonderful today. I'm coming on to do a live premiere about the oncoming new moon in Scorpio happening on November 4th or November 5th, 2021, depending on your time zone. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on to check out this uh, video. It's a really important topic because um, this particular moon cycle that we're in is uh, certainly a paradigm shift and certainly a large-scale foreshadowing of events that are going to be happening for the next two years, okay? Um, and I'm going to be talking about why that's the case uh, throughout this video. Um, it deals a lot with what the nodes are doing, and it deals a lot with some of the T-square angles that we're going to be having um, that this new moon will also really start to set up as it starts the sort of paradigm of the Saturn Uranus square reconfiguring and being made a T square by the Sun uh, transiting up to it in Scorpio. So in this video, everyone, I'm going to be talking about intuitive messages of the new moon in Scorpio as one chapter, and then the next chapter is going to be focusing on the astrology of the uh, surrounding um, planets and kind of combining that uh, together and taking a more um, specific approach that way. Um, for those of you who are new, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, this channel is on Patreon. If you want to get more bonus content, I will link that below as well. And let's jump right into it. So yes, um, new moon in Scorpio. I feel like we've all got to come down from the whole fear game. Okay, the fear that we haven't done something right, the fear that we're on the wrong trajectory, the fear of this, that, and the other is something that at this point in time feels to me motivational, as it always is. Um, fear tends to be a sign that we are not really happy with how things turned out or we're not really satisfied with a certain uh, trajectory that we're on, so we tend to start uh, coming into a fear spectrum in order to motivate ourselves to move elsewhere or to move into a territory that's more aligned with us now. Um, so I will say anything that you're feeling fear about, anything that you're feeling like you're beating your head up against a brick wall with that you just don't know the answer to, this is going to be a prevalent thing for everyone uh, during this time. And that deals a lot with the other astrology. But the new moon in Scorpio, okay, is an opportunity to transform mindset. It's always an opportunity for an emotional transformation and starting over in some way emotionally, um, starting over in some way chemically as well when it comes to the way that the uh, body is operating through hormones, through chemicals. Um, what an incredible time for some people this new moon in Scorpio will be to change their mindset about what they're involved in. And I'm hoping for most people that, that mindsets can become more hopeful that integrity can really shine through and that basically you can stop putting yourself through some of the energetic uh, bear traps that I've felt many people to be stepping into over and over again during this year cycle of 2021. So we have a critical, critical period of time shaping up between now and February of 2022. I've been hinting um, about this for quite a long time and Ever since, I think, around September on this channel, I was talking about how the February 2022 timeline uh, was shaping up to really kind of click us in to the trajectory that we need if we like. And then also, um, if you follow me on Patreon, you would have seen that in the November 2021 readings, I was also extending that timeline even further out to January 2023. Um, it's been really interesting to me as an astrologer how timelines have really been expanding. Um, and it's actually difficult for me to constrain the energies to like weekly or even monthly uh, topics. Of course they are. Of course the moon cycles are a great monthly um, activity and it's totally possible to limit it down to a monthly perspective, which I'm going to be uh, doing as well. But I just want you to know um, because of the nodal activity, the node's about to uh, shift back into the sign that this new moon is in, this is a prologue. Okay, this period of time is a prologue. That's how I can best describe it. So let it be known um, for anyone curious that you are having more of a new beginning here than you realize. And I think a lot of us want to push that away. We want to push that new beginning further into the future and um, sustain what gives us security now and keep that distance factor going on. And for me, what I'm seeing is that it does kind of take a moderate approach with this new beginning. And what I mean by that is that um, 
a lot of us have to take on a bit of a hybrid experience starting during this new moon in Scorpio. Now we should know that we want that new thing, okay? Now we should know about that new goal or that new trajectory or that new shining thing in the distance. And to me, this has been a catch-22 for the entire year of 2021. We're about to move into 2022, so maybe it will also continue then. But it's been a good thing and a bad thing to me. This whole like new thing in the future, this whole like, wow, I'm going to transcend my current experience and step into this new big motivational big thing. It, I'm comprehending this now as yes, a beautiful, incredible thing that we're perceiving it, that we're offering ourselves these things. Mm -hmm. But there's a dark side to it that I'm seeing now too. And, and in traditional New Moon and Scorpio way, we've got to look at the dark side a little bit. Where I see that um, people, in order to justify this new goal or this new expansion or this new version of themselves, they're really looking down on what they currently have. Or they have stopped trusting their current output or their current job or their current relationship because they see something better for themselves. And it's leading to a kind of um, arrogance is not the right term. It's really not the right term because it's not so much an arrogant thing. It's more of a... It's almost like someone... It's like from rags to riches, you know, someone who goes from rags to riches and then starts looking down on homeless people. It's kind of like that. That's the energy that I feel during this time where people um, once homeless have now become wealthy and successful and now look down on the homeless. It's like that type of thing. And we all know how that energy continues, right? This ends up in a revocation or some type of loss so that we then have to re-experience that difficult thing in order to not look down on it again. So we have like loops here Coming in, of course, this is the eighth sign of the zodiac. We're in Scorpio season. It's the sun and moon conjunction in Scorpio, new moon. And that's the eighth sign of the zodiac. I've been seeing eights everywhere myself. And it has signified to me that there is um, a loop here. Um, infinity, right, is the symbol of eight. So it represents sealing something off. Uh, S-E-A-L-I-N-G. Sealing, not like not like sealing. I, I mean, I guess it could be like sealing in the sense of like the thing over your head, like the sealing. Both of those things in a way. It, on one hand, provides security. It provides repetition. It provides consistency. But it also, in a way, can be confining. So that is something else that I feel many of us are dealing with at this time is like, do we accept security for confinement or do we pursue freedom for unsureness? Okay. And that is difficult for a lot of us to be working with right now. And a lot of us are presenting our dreams or our goals to ourselves in this way. Like, okay, in order to do this, in order to have what I want, I've got to exist in some type of confinement or I've got to... Um, stop something else and it, it's kind of harsh and basically this new moon in scorpio is going to be a catalyst it's always a catalyst a new or a full moon in scorpio i mean these are the times of the year where uh, things that we don't even realize are affecting our decision making on a huge scale do happen and i feel that we can wield this in a healthy way if we like so if you've been struggling with confusion, because I'm seeing a few different um, demographics, I'm seeing a few different versions of people, I'm going to speak to each um, theme that I'm seeing. One theme that I'm seeing is just confusion, okay? Like, one day I think that this is the right path for me, and the next day I'm really questioning it, and I really don't understand, like, what I'm creating. I really don't understand how it's all holding together, like, um, though it is energetic and there is a momentum to it, but I don't understand the momentum. That's a huge thing right now. And this T-square uh, this month is going to come in and really uh, define that a little bit more through perhaps a catalyst experience around the 4th of November. Um, some of us have got to get away, okay, in order to get non-confused. And kudos to you if you've already been kind of doing this, like booking a trip or getting out of your comfort zone, moving into a new territory or some type of new experience with yourself, putting your own body into a different type of experience in order to achieve clarity, that is very possible. And I feel that it's one of the only remedies to the confusion here. So it doesn't have to be extreme. You know, this doesn't mean like going to a different country. This doesn't mean um, 
you know, booking a vacation that you can't afford somewhere because Sky is on YouTube here talking about getting away. But um, there is kind of an escapism in the Scorpio archetype that I don't feel like we talk about very much. Um, and it's not the type of escapism that Pisces or the 12th house is, but the 8th house is also a bit of an escape artist through like the undercurrents, through the, uh, through what happens beneath the surface, through what happens, uh, during, um, nighttime, uh, the 8th house is the dark house, right? It rules nighttime, it rules, um, specifically new moons, okay? Um, and that's something that I've never heard other astrologers say, but I'm gonna really say that the 8th house has rulership over new moons because, um, maybe the 4th house as well, um, the fourth house kind of has rulership over all lunar cycles because it is uh, Cancerian. So it's, but the eighth house to me is about the new moon when the moon is the darkest and when the night is the darkest, right? Um, <clears throat> when, you know, there's not a beautiful full moon making light during the nighttime. So yes, new moon and specifically new moon in Scorpio, this is one of the darkest times of the year. And we might really be feeling that like, wow, the dark side of some of these dreams or the dark side of something that I created in um, such a healthy place as well, um, we have to kind of, I think, come to terms with it to a degree. I kind of feel like the perfectionism scale is so high right now. Like people are like, I've got to have this perfect shiny life and I've got to have these, this like a uh, perfectionist OCD quality that maintains a certain shine. Um, and to me, it really deprives us of the, um, yin side of the spectrum you know i feel that all of us are very yang oriented with all this aquarius energy um you know and i feel that we got so um we got so oriented towards struggle and um also not really seeing beyond our own scope during the capricorn triple capricorn conjunction of 2020 that a lot of us have compensated too far to the other side with jupiter and saturn moving into aquarius and we've gone like in essence too far into the light and in essence too far to the sun okay too far towards the sun kind of like icarus it's kind of i do see this sort of icarus archetype very clearly with this um period of time as we're also having very wild solar activity, which I will talk about in the um, astrology uh, section of the video, but we're still in intuitive messages. And there's definitely kind of, I feel, a battle for a lot of people uh, with this new moon. Um, cinematic, it's like a cinematic kind of psychological battle, and it deals a lot with how much of my time do I want to invest in optimizing, in um, sort of refacing or rebranding or re-experiencing what I already have. And then also how much do I want to just completely take a new leap of faith and move into completely new territory? This is the juxtaposition that I feel many people are in spiritually right now. Um, and it's really indicated um, in in these astrology transits. But um, another intuitive message is, another intuitive message I'm getting is kind of like I don't know, for, for some odd reason, there's this sort of like battle-oriented war spirit that I feel that people are engaging in in their more mundane experiences. It's for some reason manifesting this way where there can be a tendency to over-adrenaline or over-worry about some things that are in our lives. And I'm, I'm coming to you right now. One of the main reasons that this YouTube video is being made, and I think one of the main thesis of it, is that um, you've got to step out of that mode and work more on happiness and safety and calmness within your current output in order to find the answer to the question you're looking for. So this is very Sphinx-like. I know this is kind of like Ritalistic, but Newman and Scorpio is quite a Ritalistic energy as well. And it's almost very, it's a kind of like backhanded way that a lot of us get the clarity that we're seeking right now. It's not just through asking the question, I mean, that's a good place to start, but you'd be surprised that the way that we ask a question or the way that we present something is very much a part of the result that we get. So the tone that you take when you ask, the um, body language that one has when they present or ask a question has a lot more to do with the result sometimes than the question or the presentation itself. So this is something that Newman and Scorpio is coming in to try to heal for us, is it's trying to heal our emotional spectrum and it's trying to heal our point zero, okay, like the starting point, the sort of neutral point that we have, like when we're not thinking about any one thing, when we're not dealing with any one thing, like that neutral point zero 
has to start healing with this new moon for us to solve some of these problems that are here right now. Because I'm seeing a lot of people trying to step into problem solving from an unhealthy place. And it's like, what do they think it's going to get them? We already can see even from like 2020, like what the results of trying to solve problems in a frenetic and erratic and non-peace based place is. And that result is just chaos. And that result is more questions. And that result is more, is just an expansion of many different new questions to ask. So now with this new moon in Scorpio, yes, it's signaling a new paradigm. It's signaling a new um, way of existence and it's signaling a new level of perfectionism for a lot of people. And um, it can be quite exceptional. I mean, I am seeing people really finally striking gold with their creative output. I'm seeing people um, stepping up to a plate that they never thought they would. And I'm seeing people knowing exactly what they want. I'm seeing the universe give so uh, liberally to people the glimpse of where they need to be, the understanding of the goal. But the bridge from here to there is the rickety part that I'm feeling right now because it feels that so many of us have been on a bridge for such a long time that we're kind of like, and I, th I think I said this, maybe it was in like Virgo's reading. It's like a lot of us are now wanting to build bridges for a living instead of like actually getting somewhere. Okay. We have a lot of people in essence making like bridge building companies instead of like getting to where they always wanted to be in the first place. And it's kind of like a hitting the pause button on the bridge or it's like um, stagnating a little bit in a transitional phase instead of just getting to where they needed to always be. So if you're having a lot of unanswered questions, if you're having a lot of like what seem to be unresolvable dilemmas or just conundrums or quandaries that can never seem to really work themselves out, it probably means that you're suspending yourself in some type of void or you're suspending yourself in some type of question or medium term experience for longer than it was meant to be or okay it can be that or it can also just be not laying off of yourself too like many people especially people with control issues right and scorpio season always uh, brings this out in us if we are prone to it many people would rather live in fear and trying to find problems than they would be happy and be surprised or caught off guard by a problem so I see a lot of people choosing that, like, um, I would just rather live day by day in a level of fear or in a level of unwellness, then I would fix this and risk being happy and then that being taken away. And I'm even sensing a lot of people listening to this now being like, but that really is the better way. Like, um, it hurts so much more to have your happiness taken away from you than it does to just kind of live in a sort of more consistent fear-based um, place. This new moon in Scorpio is going to show us it if we're if that, if that's just what it's come down to at this point in time. Um, and then there can even be like hybrid situations. Like yes, there can be these situations where we, um, on one hand, maybe not are in, maybe we're not in the perfect situation, and at the same time we're in that place of like not letting it be happy either. So that just is, um, you know, I feel like that's kind of a navigate, navigating around in that second dimension or navigating around even um, in 6D for some people, you know, that that uh, constant one-on-one uh, -on -one experience of like flotsam and jetsam of minutia of details that nobody cares about, but we're prolonging or creating or turning or transfiguring into like huge crisis there's a call to um step up into a more i suppose like leadership type of role for a lot of people with this new moon in scorpio and that's so much bigger than a lot of these problems and i understand especially if you're someone who um is trying to move into that territory. I understand that you want to get everything right before you do. I understand that you're kind of maybe basing your claim on doing these things right. And that also leads to a bit of, you know, difficulty. It leads to difficulty because, especially if you're a DIY type of person, especially if you've done so much on your own, it's like only you can really be the one to criticize it. But because of that, it's also so, un it's so like never ending. So, 
again, do you see the loop nature of this energy that we're dealing with now? It's like just a constant cycle, never ending type of thing. And do we have what it takes to step out of that now? Do we have what it takes to step into the uh, next paradigm? Because it is here for us, but a lot of us are saying, no, I'm not ready to walk through that door yet. And really um, what I'm feeling to be most potent here is basically like a level of two-mindedness. This is really indicated uh, because of the North Node in Gemini and South Node in Sagittarius about to shift over. Um, and let's go ahead and segue into the astrology portion. I'll go ahead and throw up a chart here. Um, but there's basically like these two versions of ourselves or these kind of like double lives or um, two different aspects that are very strong on both ends and we're trying to really make the decision and I got to really tell you guys that by like January or February of 2022 okay um, these decisions are going to start to be set in stone as the nodes move back to um, Taurus and Scorpio and on the cusp you know one north node at zero and one degree of Gemini um, this is like the most potent part of that two-mindedness right like that duality and the south node in sagittarius gives it a very like motivational context like what the what like is the pinnacle of my existence the pinnacle like what is my dream job what is my dream house what is my dream relationship um what am i living for you know purpose desire that's the foundation of this two-mindedness with the north node in gemini um and if you're someone with like a lot of Gemini or Sag in your chart, or even like Scorpio and Taurus, especially on that cusp, it's gonna you're gonna be like right at the forefront of that. And to me, it's kind of like um, I don't know. This is just a really random example, but it's kind of like when George Washington like decided whether it's going to be like a monarchy or a republic. It's these types of like lofty, huge decision making processes with like two very succinct possibilities that many people have to kind of decide upon now. Um, and of course, that's a very macro example, but this is coming down to a very micro um, decision making process for a lot of people when it comes to like long term careers, when it comes to long term investments of time, money and energy, like a lot of people are having to make decisions like that. And that's going to start coming in now with this new moon in Scorpio, because it's triggering the emotional interpretation and foreshadowing of what the next nodal paradigm is going to be like. So what it's going to be like with nodes in um, Sag and Gemini. That's what's being triggered with this. And yes, um, moving on uh, with other astrological messages here, I think that we do have to be uh, very aware of the fact that this new moon is exactly opposite a retrograde Uranus and Taurus, meaning that our emotional health is um, tested at this time. The health of a lot of us is tested at this time. Moon-Uranus oppositions are about uh, sort of sudden emotional events. So I have to be very clear if any of you are in difficult emotional situations, um, difficult relationships, any type of yeah fear-based or destructive or um, abusive types of relationship dynamics are at a high with a Uranus moon opposite uh, Taurus and Scorpio. This is also like um, on the positive side, new emotional habits that you can start in a positive way, like suddenly no longer being emotionally upset about something, finally moving on from something, finally um, something is not a problem. That's the positive potential. But the negative potential, of course, is like emotional scenes or emotional outbursts or um, suddenly being really triggered about something or dealing with people who are kind of, um, what's the word, kind of unstable. Um, inst instability in general, I think, should be expected during this time, um, whether that's monetary, emotional. Um, it can go in good ways as well, like things that you've been worried about ending up being non-problems. I'm seeing that for a lot of people, actually. Okay, um, and we have to know also when we're pushing ourselves to the limit. I feel like Moon opposite Uranus in Scorpio and Taurus is like we didn't know it, but we were really pushing our limits too hard, and we have to sometimes take a pretty hard stop 
with certain things and we have to maybe plan better moon uranus activity always deals with like plans falling through or also having to do something you didn't expect or something coming up that might kind of divert your attention so watch out for procrastination definitely um, Mercury is finally coming out of Libra and it's going to move up and go through Scorpio. So we've got to be really good planners. We've got to be concise, powerful planners, and we've got to really stick to an itinerary in order to get through this time healthily. All right. And finally, um, one of the last points I'm going to talk about for this video is kind of acclimating ourselves to a more direct and resolution oriented approach. Um, I think that all that any of us need right now is resolution and peace of mind. Okay, these are like the two scarcities right now, resolution and peace of mind. And it seems that a lot of us for some reason just are not giving ourselves that answer or are not um, allowing that answer to come through. And that's when yes, new moon and Scorpio catalyst experiences come in. And we can kind of get like a little bit of a impact or a little bit of a like clumsiness or some type of like unexpected experience moon uranus opposition nodes getting close to that cusp like unexpected experiences that are actually for our good in the long run i don't think that all of them are necessarily for the good because not every unexpected experience can necessarily be that way but i think it's good to spin it that way to yourself or like however you can see unexpected experiences as, as uh, contributing to your longer term empowerment is really good um, but try to understand that we're not where we were in like August and September of 2021. Like right as this new moon comes through, it's clicking these direct uh, placements and it's and it's preparing a foreshadowing for the nodal shift. And it's also um, probably giving us catalyst experiences and thoughts about, okay, about resolutions and about untying knots and about fixing things. Okay. But it feels that there's got to be some kind of cleaning of difficult emotional experiences, or there's got to be an acceptance of where things currently are so that we can be calm enough and tranquil enough to actually do problem solving because problem solving from a, from an erratic and non-peaceful place rarely is ever problem solving. It's usually problem creating. So Yes, I feel practically many of us have to distill into calmness and tranquility and we have to generate for ourselves a nice period of time, even if things aren't perfect. Maybe some of us have to accept that things just aren't going to be perfect right now with these T-squares shaping up later this month, okay? I don't think anything could be perfect right now. And you'd be surprised about how much is going to unwind or untie itself or piece itself together by especially like February of 2022. And by then I feel that many of us have resolutions and I don't feel that there's a need for emergency actions right now in most cases. I don't feel like those are good ideas right now because things are shifting so quickly. It's like you could make a what seems to be a permanent resolution right now and just a day or two later feel like it was not the right decision to make, like that it no longer resonates with the way things then changed a few days later. So on one hand, yes, maybe it's good to have like a great note-taking app, a great journal, a great something to like record all of these new ideas and new resolutions you might be getting to current issues in your life, and then represent all of these to yourself um, later when it's a better time for um, doing that. But um, I feel that everything's okay. I feel that this is the bed that we've made. I feel that the momentum has to be carried out the way that it is right now. So that should actually be one of maybe the best resolutions or one of the best piece um discoveries that we can have right now is just like you know it is the way that it is right now no need to scramble no need to do be messy you know and scramble around and try to look as if we're doing that because that's when things look weird that's when problems start coming is when people start to scramble you know if you've ever seen like a brown recluse spider the way that it just like zooms through and the way that it scrambles and when it sees the light um, some people can do that just because they're uncomfortable right now. And it's not like meaning that they're not good people or that they're, you know, venomous, you know, like a brown recluse spider, but it's just like almost a reflex. And I think that it's better now to have poison. It's better now to have um, elegance and calmness and tranquility through what is going to be a little bit of a storm, okay, throughout November. Um, not necessarily at the individual level, but more so at the collective a lot of stuff is going to kind of fall through for some people, a lot of stuff, not, not even for some people, but there's just going to be this kind of like challenge, okay, with these T-squares, it can't not be challenging. 
and it's challenging because there's too many conflicting creations working incompatibly or inharmoniously with one another and eventually something has to kind of win out <laughs> and that's probably going to be happening um throughout this month and it's it's better to almost be in an observing role than it is to be in an acting role i feel with a lot of these things happening now so in that vein i don't feel it's a good time to i don't know impulsively make a new business or impulsively start a new career or impulsively move or impulsively make long-term effects okay if it's been in the cards for a while that's a different story but for most of us we have a beautifully constructed reality that we can just kind of sit idle and sit pretty in for a while and that is almost i would see i would feel to be like the most advisable thing and to recultivate the beauty of what you have, okay? And to start to enjoy it, because I feel that that gives more answers than rejecting or being ungrateful or being unhappy with what you have. That's what's leading to a lot of this T-square energy to start with. But anyway, everyone, some great food for thought for this new moon in Scorpio. Um, basically, to conclude, try to not succumb to fear, okay? Try to not succumb to worry or doubt or an impulsive need to make changes. That's, the, again, as some of us know, I mean, the moon is debilitated in Scorpio, so it's not the easiest sign for the moon to be in. It's usually operating from a place of emotional need or from a place of emotional lack. And therefore, decision-making can be hampered. <laughs> and so for this entire month, that's important to know that that's like the collective theme. And I, I, what I see a lot from moon in Scorpio people and having worked with a lot of moon and scorpio people is they tend to love astrology and they tend to um be um avid in that way um the mistake often with that sign is fear and impulse okay um overstaying and then also leaving too soon so bad timing sometimes and and allowing emotions or a lack of familial or home well-being to dictate one's life instead of like more sober decision making so sober decision making anything that's indicative of sobriety anything that is indicative of a happy neutral place would be the most advisable thing right now while yes comprehending new incredible dreams and new incredible visions but i would not do anything impulsively with those because those are not here yet for a reason okay that's another really important thing with this time. Try to not jam something through or rush something. Ooh, what a bad time to rush. What a bad time to jam things through. Coasting, coasting, observing, much better right now. Passivity, not, not so bad. And really soon, I mean, even in like December and January, there's already a much more active role that people can take. But anyway, everyone, I'm going to conclude the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yes, be sure to check out my Patreon page. It's linked below. I do weekly forecasts every Saturday. Um, brief little um, exclusive videos over on Patreon. Um, and it's a great little space. Definitely come check it out. Also check out the Discord server. It's a great way to um, interact with this incredible community of people. And be sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit that red subscribe button. That's totally free and a great way to support the channel as well as the like and comments. And I hope you guys will come to live premieres. They're happening every Friday at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central and 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's so fun. So have a great week, everyone. I hope you enjoy this beautiful transit. Much love. Bye.